I'm not ashamed. Why was John the Baptist beheaded? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Matthew on walking through the Bible. Of his word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Matthew chapter 14. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 12. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. For Herod laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Because John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Therefore he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompted by her mother, said, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he sat and had John beheaded in prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. I'm probably beginning to sound like a broken record, but we must remember that Matthew is not presenting to us an exact chronology of events. And because of that, it can be hard by reading Matthew alone as to when these events take place. However, if you read Mark 6, which is the parallel to this passage, you will find that Herod heard of Jesus' fame during the period that the disciples were sent out on the limited commission, which took place in Matthew 11, verse 1. And he is thus recalling John's death as something that occurred before that time. What makes the reckoning of time even harder for us is that Matthew 11, 1 and Matthew 11, 2 are not even during the same time period, for John the Baptist is alive at that point. It is thus believed that the events of much of what we read in Matthew 11, 12, and 13 happen closer to the Sermon on the Mount and are thus contemporary with some of the events of chapters 8 and 9. With all of this being said, having a perfect chronology in our heads is not required for us to have faith in the accuracy of the events presented, so we're going to move on to deal with what we read today. Herod the Tetrarch has heard of Jesus and his fame. Who is this Herod? The last Herod who read of in Matthew was Herod the Great, who died in chapter 2. His son Archelaus was given oversight over Judea, Idumea, and Samaria following the death of Herod the Great, which is why Joseph and Mary settled in Nazareth following their return from Egypt. Herod the Tetrarch was also a son of Herod the Great, and he was given oversight over Galilee and Perea. With this man overseeing Galilee, it makes sense as to why, A, John the Baptist would have had opportunity to speak to him, and B, why he would have heard of Jesus' fame. When Herod heard of Jesus' fame and the miracles that were being done, he thought that this meant that John the Baptist was risen from the dead. We are not told why Herod thought that Jesus was John the Baptist and not just another prophet, but one can safely conclude by what Matthew tells us next is that Herod was suffering from a guilty conscience. Matthew then records the reason as to why John was in prison. From chapter 11, we know that John was in prison, but here we learn that it was because John taught that Herod was unlawfully married to Herodias. Knowing a bit of the backstory here would help. The Philip we're talking about here is Herod the great son by Mariamne. That would make Philip the half-brother of Herod the Tetrarch. Philip was originally married to Herodias, but after divorcing him, Herodias then married Herod the Tetrarch. Now, when many use this passage today, they teach what was wrong with this marriage was that Herodias was divorced from Philip, not for the sin of adultery, and therefore she had no right to marry Herod. While such would certainly have solid foundations under Matthew 19.9, let's remember that John's preaching occurred when the law of Moses was still in effect. Deuteronomy 24, 1-4 would tell us that a woman could remarry after divorce and not be in adultery, no matter what the reason was for the divorce. If such is the case, what was wrong with this marriage? Why was it unlawful? Because Leviticus 18, 16 says, You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. Philip was still alive, and with such being the case, it was unlawful for Herod to take his brother's wife as his wife. Now, Herod would have killed John for this preaching, 
but he was afraid to do so because the people regarded John as a prophet. So instead, he threw him in prison. On Herod's birthday, though, he held a party, and at this party, there was lascivious dancing. The daughter of Herodias, Herod's stepdaughter, danced for him and pleased him, so much so that he swore to her that he would give her anything she wanted. She went back to her mother, who told her to ask for the head of John the Baptist on a platter. This request made Herod regret what he said, but because he had made an oath, he fulfilled his oath and beheaded John the Baptist. This story is used by the Jehovah Witnesses to condemn birthday parties, but the party itself wasn't the problem. It was what went on at this party, lascivious dancing, among other things. Women or men dancing provocatively can cause others to say and do things they wouldn't otherwise do. If Herod hadn't have had dancing at this party, then perhaps John would have been spared even if only for a little longer. As it was, sin led to more sin. And the death of one who Jesus said in Matthew 11, 11, was the greatest prophet, other than himself, of course, that was born among women. After John's death, his disciples came and buried John's body and then went and told Jesus. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.